Hi, in this video, we're going to set up a development environment and it's going to consist of a Visual Studio IDE and then we'll have Git installed locally with SSH keys to allow us to uh, push and pull from GitHub um, without having to enter our user ID and password. So we'll be starting off with setting up a GitHub account and then we'll install Git locally set up the SSH key, do some configuration for username, and then copy the public key to GitHub settings. And then uh, we'll go in and install Visual Studio Code, and this is the free version. Um, and we'll set up some preferences and plugins to help with web development um, work. All right, so let's get into it. All right, we'll start with creating the github.com account and github.com is a public site where we can store our code and it provides help with versioning um, and makes the development process a lot more friendly um, gives us the ability to back out changes when we don't we're not happy with them and to work collaboratively so first of all um, we need to sign up for an account and if you click on sign up you can go to create personal account and you can make up a, your own username and usually it's something without any uh, spaces in it. Now you can see I already have an account so that's taken so you might if you find something's taken you can add a number to it something like that. So that would be your username and then you will enter an email address and a password. So once you've done that create an account and you should be ready to go. So let me sign in and just once you've created the account, you should be able to sign in like so. And you will get into this uh, repository that you can start new projects. And you'll see over here, your profile will take you into your list of repositories. And we'll be looking at settings later when we want to enter the SSH keys. All right, so that is how you can set up your GitHub account. All right, well, now that we've got an account on GitHub, we're going to install the Git program. This is a program that runs locally on your computer, um, and it will allow you to uh, take code that is local and move it out to GitHub to your repo, or likewise bring code from GitHub down to your local drive. <clears throat> so. We need to do um, a basic install, and this is where, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a Windows machine, the instructions are going to be a little bit different. So let's go take a look at installing on a Mac first. So first of all, we're going to want to download the Git program. And this link here will take you, we're at the git-scm.com, and you can Google download Git to get to this um, page uh, and it says we're going to be downloading 2.17 um, that can change uh, as, as, as these things change over time um, the versioning but um, it says download will starting but it, you know you don't see any action happening here so it says if it doesn't start click to down you'll download manually so this takes me to SourceForge which is a source of um, uh, uh, software and you can see it immediately downloaded right here so once this is done and I can see it's done now I'll go to finder and I can see that I've got this 2.17 downloaded so it's a the DMG extension it's um, a packaged up set of files and if we just double click on that it's going to open it up and I should get this um, set of files with a readme and version and this pkg file is the one that we're going to double click on to actually install it so double click on that and it tells me that it can't be open because it's from an unidentified developer and that's because we're downloading it from the internet um, we can't get it on the app store so there's uh, a bit of security checking going on there if you click on this question mark, you can see that it's, it'll explain that. It's trying to prevent malware. But it'll allow you to override that by 
control click the app icon and then choose open. So let's try that. If I come back over here to the PKG file and I'm going to hold the control key, click it and then choose open. And I got that again. So sometimes I've noticed that it will give you that, but this is what we're really trying to get to. So if you see that message again, just look a little bit behind and you'll see that you have this now this wizard installation program for the Mac. And so if I just now click on continue and just pretty much take the default, so I'm not going to change the location, just click on install. Now this is where it wants me to enter my Apple password just to ensure that I, I'm the one installing it. It's my computer. So I'm going to enter that password and then click on install software. So it's going to run it. It's going to tell me it was successful. I can close this wizard and then I can move it to the trash. There's no sense in keeping it. And I can close this out. Um, I think you'll see that it should be gone. Yeah, so it's all cleaned up. Um, and now that it's installed, I'm going to open up Terminal. So I can go to Spotlight and enter Terminal. Um, I can also Command Space to open Spotlight. So I often do that rather than actually clicking on the Spotlight. And I'll open up Terminal. And this will allow me to take a look at my file, to, to, at my installation. So first thing is I like to say which git. And there I am. I've got the user local bin git, which is what I would expect to see. And this tells me that, that the terminal is able to find git in my path. And then I can also double check the version, git dash dash version, and I've got 2.17.1. So I have now got git installed locally. All right, so the next step, let's look back at these directions. We've actually completed all of these direct instructions to install Git locally. Um, now we're going to take care of um, getting the SSH key committed. So if you look at, we've done the Git dash dash version in which Git, so we're confident that Git is installed. Now we're going to be looking at key gen and Git config. For this, I'm going to rely on this SU Web Dev Git book called Watts Lab FAQ. Um, and this is the first article, Install Git Locally, that describes the steps. And these steps are taken right from GitHub. Um, and you know, we've already done the download. So now we're going to be looking at getting our Git, local Git program to talk to GitHub using Secure Shell SSH. So we'll just follow these instructions and we'll be doing it in the terminal. So if I open up the terminal here, and this is just the regular terminal, I've got it set with the man page theme and I increased the font size to make it a little bit more readable. So if I do, so ls-al tilde slash dot SSH. So what we're looking for here is do I have any um, SSH keys already created because I don't want to override them. They may be working with other um, websites, um, and, uh, other um, products, and I don't want to remove them if they already exist. In this case, I have removed mine, and so there are none there. And this is probably what you'll see if you haven't done this before. So we need the uh, we need it, the dot makes the SSH folder under our root. Um, to be hidden, but with ls and the dash al option, we would be able to see it if it existed. And by the way, pwd, I'm in my working directory. Uh, my working directory is my home peltzar, um, users peltzar. Okay, so what I want to end up with is this. Um, I want to end up with the id rsa, um, that dsa that looks like a typo. We continue on and see the ls-alssh. Um, if we run that in our directory, this is going to show us if we've already created one of these um, 
public key files and the .ssh directory is hidden. We know that because it starts with a dot. So um, if I just said ls.ssh, I'm not going to see it, you know, even if it existed. Um, but the al says show me everything and the ls again is the bash command for list. So this just lists files. Um, so since we don't see it, we sh we're good to continue with creating it. And if you look at the next instruction, we're going to use our email, the same one that you entered to create GitHub to uh, create this, we're going to call the SSH key gen command. Um, and by the way, this um, terminal is in the Mac is using bash. So we're, we can enter all of these commands without having to run any special programs. So let's paste that in there. I did a control C to get that into my clipboard and then a control V to paste it onto the line here. And then I'll just put my own email in here. And that should give me, that should create, a, that should run the program to create the keys. So it's telling me it's creating a public private key. So we're going to see actually a couple of files um, and it's going to ask me questions and I can just take the default by hitting enter. So I do want an ID underscore RSA file set. I don't really need um, a passphrase for this. Um, but if I did, you know, it gives you the option to enter it again. And a passphrase is kind of like a pin number or something. Um, just an extra set of security, but it's not necessary if you don't want it. So we'll just hit enter again and it tells me that it has created these public private keys. So now if I say ls dash al slash dot ssh uh, or sorry ls dash al dot ssh I do have this id rsa and the id rsa pub and the id rsa is like my private key and I don't want to show that to anybody but the IDRSA pub, the contents of that can be shown. So let me use, I'm going to use the cat command in bash. That will just list out the contents of this of the file and say .ssh IDRSA.pub. And there it is. That is the public key that can be shared with anyone and that we will share with GitHub in order to create this. All right. All right, so now that we have the public key and we have it available to us. You can just do a shift and a, and a select to cop to, and then a control C to copy that text into your buffer. Uh, you can also right click and copy into your buffer. So putting in the buffer, the clipboard, in other words, makes it so that we can go over to our GitHub account. And remember we, we, if we look under um, our picture profile um, drop down here, we have this settings and then the SSH and GPG keys. We can just click new SSH key and use either the paste or control V to paste that key into this buffer area. <clears throat> and then I usually give it a title. Um, you know, that helps me, let's say Mac um, school, helps me remember which um, computer I copied this key from because it's all about connecting up a local machine to this GitHub um, account that you've created. So, and then I would just say add SSH key and you will then should see it down at the bottom of your list. All right, looking back at the instructions we're following, we've done the key gen, which is creating the key and copying it to GitHub. The next thing we want to do is git config. And so looking at this install git locally, um, and you can see what we've done. We created the key. Um, we used, we didn't use a passphrase. We just defaulted on all of the key gen questions. Um, the next thing that we need to do is start this SSA agent and add keys. So all you need to do for that is to uh, 
copy this into your buffer and then go and paste it into your um, into your uh, terminal hit enter and it will tell you that it started it up um, and um, then run this command to add that agent okay so we just we've started it up and then we run the agent and we've added that identity now um, your computer will be able to use SSH to do the work that it needs to do and we did the copy um, we catted the file and we copied it into settings using the SSH GPG um, and so we have completed the key gen setup the next thing we need to do is the get config and the instructions for that are uh, let's see um, again in the get book of FAQ here we could see that the, the what we need to do for the get config is to add the username and email and so once again I am going to highlight this select it and copy it into the clipboard go to my terminal paste it and then enter my name here so my name and then I'm going to do the same for the email so I'll paste that and I will replace this with my email so you'll want to use the same name and email that you used when you signed up for this account oh username uh, so it doesn't want my name it wants my username so let's make that Rebecca Peltz these are the this is the information you gave when you created the github account all right so that takes care of the configuration and setup that will allow us to connect from github or from our local git um, uh, get or we'll have a local get repository managed by git to the github account that we created online okay back to our instructions and so we have done um, all of this um, copying of ssh key to github and we are now ready to start working on installing vs code and again because we're installing on a machine it's going to be different instructions for mac and windows um, but just to re re summarize where we've gotten, we've created the GitHub account. Um, we have installed Git locally, created the SSH key, um, and copied it out to GitHub settings. And we've added our username and email to a local Git configuration. So, and we did a lot of this work by using the FAQ that um, discusses Git installing Git locally in the SU Web Dev um, site, um, in the SU Web Dev repository. So the next thing that we're going to do is to start work on installing Visual Studio. We're going to install Visual Studio code using this link here. Uh, and you can find this link by Googling Visual Studio code download take you to this page and because we're on a Mac we will download this Mac uh, version right here you can see it's downloading 13 out of 68 megabytes so it'll take it a couple of seconds here and then once it is downloaded we can go see it in the finder uh, and there it is VS Code Darwin Stable the next thing that we'll do is double click on it it's a zip file um, that will unzip it and you can see it produced this visual studio code with an icon now this is not a file that you can double click like it's not a wizard that's going to automatically install it for you but what you can do is just copy it into the applications folder so you can either do a copy paste or you can actually drag it into applications and since I already had it it's asking me if I want to replace it or keep it second version and I'm going to replace it 
you probably won't see that message if you haven't installed it before. Um, and now that it's been installed in here in this applications, I should be able to get to it using Spotlight. So either click on Spotlight or Command Space, and there it is, code, and you just refer to it as code, not Visual Studio Code in Spotlight. So I can just type in code and then hit enter. And you can see down here it's opening up. So it's verifying it and it's going to ask me, you know, because I downloaded it, I didn't install through App Store. Um, I'm just going to say open it and it will open up to this Visual Studio Code. Now I'm going to close this. I actually had something already opened in it. Let's see. Uh, we'll just close close this folder. So you'll see something more like this, an empty Visual Studio Code. Um, and just to kind of get familiar with this over on the left hand side, this is the navigation, um, the left nav, and, and you have a folder structure, you have uh, searching, you have some GitHub uh, version integration, you have some debugging, and then you have plugins. We're going to look at adding a couple of plugins and let me just take you to there is a, a page that you can get to in the setup in the FAQ called setup dev environment with Visual Studio Code and here you can see you can um, step through these instructions but basically we just uh, downloaded it double clicked it copied it over to applications um, and then we are now going to do some plugins and I'm just going to suggest a couple of plugins. One of them mentioned here is live server. This is, will create a local server so you can preview your HTML, CSS, JavaScript changes. So if you come into, get I'm, I'm in this plugins on the left side, this plugins area and I type in live server and you can see there is a live server and mine says disable because I already have it installed but you will get initially an uninstall and then you will let's let me uninstall this and then I will reload it. So anytime you install or uninstall a plugin, you have to reload it for it to become active. So I can say live server, find it, and then I'll say install it and then I'll say reload. So that's how you install plugins. Uh, and I also like beautify. So let me probably already have this installed too. Uh, beautify. Yeah, so if I uninstall it, reload, then I can... And Beautify is useful because it gives you a format document that you um, that will help you with uh, keeping your code easy to manage and read. So we'll just reload that. And so that's how you install plugins. Just you, you know, and you'll find that you'll want to look into some of these as you go through uh, the courses. Um, but th this will definitely get you going. Um, if we look at these instructions after the plugins, I um, have some instructions about um, about. Uh, so this gives you some instructions on how to use live server and we'll look at that when we install some code. You can't use live server unless you have an index.html or some kind of HTML for it to load. So we'll wait on that. Um, but there is user settings um, and user settings are done through preferences settings and you can see it's called user settings and basically if you want to change the defaults here are on the left and if you want to change them you just copy them over to the right and, and put in the change. But um, I wouldn't worry too much about user settings at this point. Um, we can look at some if we run into any problems. You kind of, as you learn the tool, you get to see what you like. One thing though, since we're on the Mac, I would suggest that you do this. Um, so add it to the Mac path. And Visual Studio Code provides a way to do that, the Command Shift P, and then install code and path. So we close out this. So if I just say command, which is the, the Mac command, shift P, and then install, let's see, 
install code. Or what was it? Let's see. Install code in path. Command shift P. Install code in path. Okay, I'm not seeing that right now for some reason. So to add it to the path, let's go back to Visual Studio Code and Control Shift P and Shell Command Install Code in Path. And it tells us that it was successfully installed there. And what this will do for us is it will make it easier for us to start this from the we can start it from Spotlight, we know, by typing in code, but also if you go to the command line, so I'm opening up the command line again, um, I can actually just type in code from here as well, and it will open it. Let's try that again. We'll close out, close out the... So code is now closed, but if I go to the command line, I can open it up from there. So that's a useful little um, change that you can make on the Mac. Um, so um, that is how we install Visual Studio Code. The next step that we want to look at is our Hello World program. Um, so uh, we're going to actually work on a project and it's a Hello World project. So let's take a look at that. As we get into working on modifying code and using um, the Visual Studio Code to help us interact with GitHub and and uh, make our changes and test them. Um, we're going to it's going to be the same whether you're on a Mac or on a Windows environment. So we're going to create a separate video. Look for a separate video on the modifying the code. But for now, just let's just review what we've done. We've created the GitHub account. We've installed Git locally and set up an SSH key that makes it possible to communicate with GitHub without having to enter our username and password every time we make a change. Um, we've installed the Visual Studio IDE and we've set up some preferences and some plugins. And we've uh, provided some references um, that you can use to go, um, you know, kind of review what we did here with install Git locally and set up environment with Visual Studio code. So look for the next video that will talk about how to how to actually work on a project. Thank you.